Hi, this is Trent. And this is Garth with Tammany Hall, the game of area control and political influence from 20 Tickety 2, resurrected by Pandasaurus in 2012 on Kickstarter. Now, in this one, you're playing a politician who's manipulating waves of immigrants into 19th century New York. You're deploying your ward bosses into little neighbourhoods amongst populations of Germans and Italians and English and Irish, and you're trying to win elections! Yay, elections. Sounds pretty boring. Except it's not. In fact, this is probably the best gateway game into the board gaming hobby for many a year. It's light, fast and easy enough to teach to your grandmother while also appealing to nerds like us. This three to five player game lasts 16 years, which is happily condensed into 60 to 90 minutes, during which you're chasing those elusive victory points. Cleverly, the surprisingly large board gives instructions for setup, pointers for all the various phases and sequences of play, which along with a very well written six page rulebook make this almost grandmother proof. The board's broken up into three zones and these only come into effect according to the number of players and as the game progresses so the board gets bigger as you go. And then each player has a group of ward bosses that they deploy into those wards to represent their stake and influence in each area. Here's how simple it is. On your turn you can either place two ward bosses into any two active wards or you can place one ward boss and one immigrant cube. If you do this you pick up a political favour token of the corresponding colour. You're going to need a the bosses and the immigrants can go into the same ward or different wards, it's up to you. And there's no limit to how many immigrants or bosses are in each ward, which means that some will get very crowded. Each turn represents a year. Four turns equals one electoral term. The elections are pretty simple, you just count the number of bosses in each ward, each is worth one vote. Players then can add votes by spending their political influence tokens, and this is the clever bit, so long as they match whichever group of immigrants are in the ward. You do this in sealed bids, with any token spent being lost, regardless of whether or not you win or lose. Yeah, and you'll score a victory point per ward, and whoever wins the most becomes the mayor, which is worth extra victory points, but not much else. The newly elected mayor then has the unpleasant task of having to hand out these city offices, each of which has a special power. And uh, it's a real pain to have to hand these out, because these can and will get used against you. Now we're obviously simplifying, but that's about it. Add your victory points up, declare a winner, done. There are a couple more things we'd like to add. Uh, like for example, there are some special wards on the board that give you bonus points, and you will be fighting over those. You will. And then there's slander, where you spend chips to say your opponent's mother sucks eggs, and you remove a ward boss or two. Or you keep quiet, and the chips are worth victory points at the end. But that's about it. You place the immigrants that you want, you get the political influence that you need, and you just have more bosses in the wards that you want. It's pretty simple. My grandmother could do that. She could. But if I place a ward boss here, is it exposing me to slander? Am I targeting the right ward and the right player? The mayor. Ultimately, you're forced to interact in this game. There can be a lot of wheeling and dealing, but nothing is binding, and it's just every man for himself. When it was originally produced, only 500 copies were printed, and due to the voodoo economics of board gaming, it was not reprinted. But now it's back. And this is the perfect gateway game. It's really, really simple to teach. It plays fast, but it's subtle enough that you have to think about every little thing you're going to be doing. And the theme's really there, that Gangs of New York style. So I'm going to give this 9 out of 10 Daniel day Lewises. <laughs> In what will be looked back as the kickstarting bubble... Tammany Hall is actually a game that was worth kickstarting. I'm going to give it an historically accurate 8.5 Statues of Liberty.